so now I will be talking about the effects of light as a limiting factor on light on as a limiting factor so we know that light as such has got a well documented effects on its processes in plants like as photosynthesis transpiration seed germination flowering etc so there are a lot of uh, effects on plants and as well as in animals so the intensity of light actually it comes from the sun in the uh, in the in the ecosystem and it shows a lot of spatial variations and this depends upon different seasons in different seasons you have different intensity of light in winter you have less light in summer you have more light mm. you have uh, depends upon season place that is in certain areas there is more light certain areas receive less light depends on the longitude latitude then uh, in the equator uh, on the seasons the light differs in the uh, in the tropics the light is of course equal distributed same during the winters and in the summers but if you uh, in the equator and the tropical regions but if you go to the temperate regions in europe and all you'll see that in the summers the the day is still uh, say nine o'clock nine p.m in the night you have sunlight and in the, the Norway, Finland, Sweden, it's the la land of the midnight sun. You can even in the summers you find at 12 o'clock you can find the sun in the sky. And in winter you don't see the light at all. Maybe the, the sun rises at uh, 12, uh, 12 in the afternoon and then it sets at 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. So the light intensity de decreases. So light uh, shows a lot of spatial variations. So several factors which influence first is you can say the atmosphere lots of gases and uh, clouds and all these presents they influence the uh, intensity of light reaching the earth then you have second suspended particles particles in polluted regions these suspended particles they the smog photochemical smog they block the intensity of light falling then you have different water layers so light which enters into the pond that is uh, influenced by with the layers of water which is uh, cloudy or not then in the forest layers of vegetations are very important the higher it is the more light enters the lower it goes less light enters because the vegetation blocks it then of course the topological factors there are topological factors like slope if there is a slope of mountain the light is blocked so these are the several things uh, the direction of the slope slope and its direction so they essentially these factors they influence how much radiant energy
will reach the surface for organism use and we know that light which falls the radiant light which falls it is converted to biological energy by autotrophs it's also converted to chemical and other energies by uh, of course biological energy is also part of chemical energy is also converted into a uh, through uh, machines it's converted to other forms of energy so now we will uh, talk about how light acts as a limiting factor factor in relation to plants directly the, the effect can be direct or indirect the effect of light can be direct or indirect the direct can be say for example chlorophyll production for chlorophyll production light is absolutely essential except some germinating seedlings and all they don't need light but for growth of as you know chlorophyll is the place where you can uh, you have the photosynthesis taking place and so if there is no uh, uh, light no chlorophyll no photosynthesis so light limits growth in this manner and if there are no plants no animals those who feed on plants the second is heating action exposure of the plant or different parts of the plant to light raises the temperature exposure to light raises temperature of plants and this temperature is essential for several enzymatic and biochemical reactions to take place in the plant the next point is transpiration we know that indirectly plant transpiration rate is affected by light so as you know that because of this light there is this heating which takes place high light intensity heating takes place and from the stomata water transpires out from below the leaf surface there are holes known as stomata they open water transpires out and the, this water which goes out 
it gives a pull to the root to absorb more water so this physiological process of transpiration is affected by light intensity this is uh, also related to the same thing stomatal movement that is opening and closing of stomata is essential for transpiration and it is affected by light another point the next point is distribution of plants is affected by the intensity of the light in the polar regions in the temperate and polar regions the vegetation is different from that of the equator and tropics you have more deciduous trees in the uh, the where you have deciduous trees and in the temperate and polar regions in the temperate and polar regions you have evergreen trees so this is a uh, this also affects the distribution of plants the next point is a large point and that is development of plant parts because of light the next part of course is the overall vegetative development plant parts plants they can be classified ecologically on the basis of relative light requirements relative light requirements and the effects of light on their overall vegetative development 
so how can they be divided they can be divided into heliophytes one heliophytes are plants which grow best in full sunlight then you have the skeophytes they are the plants which grow best in lower light intensities there are some heliophytes which grow best in the sun but also grow in the shade range of tolerance is quite good they are known as facultative skeophytes similarly there are plants which grow best in lower light intensities but can also grow in full light they are facultative heliophytes as you can see cactuses they grow best in full sunlight but they can grow also in shades shades too so plants which grow in uh, plants which grow in shade in comparison to plants developing in full sunlight they show some different logical and physiological features and what are they they have thicker stems well developed conducting elements they are the xylem and phloem
well developed mechanical tissues shorter internodes so these are all characteristics of plants developing in full sunlight they have thicker stems well developed conducting elements mechanical tissues shorter internodes smaller chloroplast well developed palisade parenchyma poorly developed spongy parenchyma root longer longer and more in number and are branched low photosynthetic rate per unit surface high respiration rate low water content higher concentration of salts and sugars high osmotic pressure so this uh, th this there is a lot of uh, parts in the develop you can see there is a lot of developmental differences because of the intensity of light the next part is which we come is photoperiodism this is a very important part so what is uh, photoperiod photoperiod is the total length of the daily light period to which plants are exposed it is the total length of the daily light period to which plants are exposed and this photoperiodism has a profound effect on vegetative growth
and flowering so on the basis of this photo period plants can be classified into first are the short day plants so what are these plants short day plants develop normally when light photo period is between 12 to 14 hours so if they not develop normally if there is short uh, li light photo period is short say 12 to 14 hours example you know the pea plant why it why it grows best in winters you don't get it in summers this is the reason because in the winters you have short day growth short day uh, yeah, the days are shorter example the, there are sort of a uh, uh mm, salvia splendens mere dewe then you have the datura cannabis etc there are lot of short day and you have on the other hand you have the long day plants they demand a photo period more than 15 to 16 hours example mustard it is also known that for example in arabidopsis when treated to 16 hours light is to 8 hours darkness flowering starts faster but when treated the other way around 18 hour light and 16 hour darkness vegetative parts more the flowering parts they come much delayed so short day means the animal the plant thinks that it is now winter and it's not ideal conditions and so it's better not flower right now grow your vegetative parts apart from that you have of course uh, neutral plants day in photo photo period neutral plants are also present photo period neutral plants are also present 
and the last part of course we go to is the effect on ecological succession how light plays an role in ecological succession there are some reports in literature which says that light has got a role in plant succession it is mentioned normally that light requirement of pioneers or the first community which comes are comparatively much more than that of the cli climax community that light requirement of pioneers or the pioneer community the first community which comes in a blank barren land is much more than that of the climax community such factors mainly the temperature soil fertility under natural conditions they modify the influences brought about by light so as we can see that light has got a lot of role in that of plants limiting the distribution of plants now let us look at the effect of light light in relation to that of animals first part metabolism basically light affects metabolism through its heating effect what it does is it increases enzymatic activities and general metabolic rates then it also affects reproduction in many species especially in birds light initiates breeding activities gonads they become active in increased light intensities during summer deer sheep goats etc these ruminants they are short day 
animals that is reproduction rate increases during short days where the light intensity is less short days then there is spring breeding in birds during spring increased in reproduction that is because of the increasing intensity of light apart from reproduction the next thing in animal which is affected is development in salmon the fish salmon larva undergo normal development larva they undergo normal development only under sufficient light con condition only under sufficient light conditions they need light otherwise they will not develop in mytilus it's a mollusk larva grow larger in dark then effect of light on the eyes in proteus it's an animal which lives in caves and deep sea fishes eyes are absent or rudimentary you know the case of the mole it is blind in surface dwelling species eyes head ratio and development it is normal and along with the eyes comes the next part that is vision so people surface dwellers air dwellers they have got high vision dark dwellers like owls low vision or blind you know the case of the owl versus the hawk owl in the night is the ferocious predator it can kill the hawk in the night and hawk it is the ferocious predator in day that is because of their 
vision different differences then in animals another effect is pigmentation most of the chemical changes that result into the formation of pigments they are initiated by light energy light energy it has what it does chemical changes which initiate pigment formation so light energy darker skin color you can see it with yourself well, the more you get exposed to the sun you are uh, more tanned then light also affects locomotion there are organisms which move away from light and there are organisms which move towards light an earthworm moves away from light so in damp dark places you'll find lots of earthworms so light is uh, limiting the distribution of animals here animals like euglena they will move towards light so the earthworm is negatively photo tactic they will they will move towards light and they are positively photo tactic the last point is which we will discuss on the limitation is photo period or circadian or biological rhythm light is a very along with temperature very important cue for controlling the biological clock which is present in all organisms when you eat when you go to sleep clock for example when an organism will hi hibernate or when the organism will sleep or when the our organism will uh, say for example eat or when its activity will be high so light has got a direct role in controlling the biological clock so this ends this chapter